In this video, we'll be replacing the front driver's side brake hose in this 2005 Honda Element. To remove our wheel, it's going to be a 19 millimeter socket. I'll take our wheel off now. We're going to remove this bolt here, holding in our bracket in the middle of our brake line. It's going to be a 12 millimeter bolt. We're going to remove this nut here on the hard line, brake line side. We're going to use this bracket and clip holding this line nice and sturdy for us while we remove this. So with a 10 millimeter, we'll remove this, this nut here. And before we take this all the way out, we're going to make sure we have spill protection down, some kind of collection for any brake fluid that will come out of this line. So now our clip is set into a notch. We're going to use a hook tool to pull it out of that notch. Now there are two ears going around, one on each side of your hose end here. Just got behind there and pried forward. If you can get it just enough where you can get your hook tool through that clip, you'll be able to pull the clip forward and off, just like that. There's your clip. Now that we have that removed, you can see that our line is free. All we're going to do is just pull it straight down and out of the bracket. Now the clip that we were just removing went in straight through here. So now on our caliper, we have our banjo bolt. Our banjo bolt is going to be a bolt, a crush washer, the brake hose, and then another crush washer. We're going to make sure we take all of those out. It's going to be a 12 millimeter. And again, be ready for some brake fluid to come out of here. Your piston in here does house some fluid. So we have banjo bolt, crush washer, brake hose, crush washer. So we know nothing is left over here, which makes sure this area is clean and free of any debris. We're going to take the bolt out. We're going to reuse that bolt, but not the crush washers. We'll remove that bolt and discard the hose and washers. So we're going to take our new hose. And we're going to line up this elbow here, or this bend in the hose. That way. We're going to take our banjo bolt and a crush washer. We're going to put it through the brake line. And we're going to put one more crush washer on the inside and thread this into the caliper. Now the key here is making sure that your brake hose does go into the notch for this arm here the right way. Once we get that threaded in, 
we'll snug this up just to stop any more brake fluid from leaking. And then we'll come back when we're done and torque it down. So now we'll torque down our banjo bolt to 25 foot-pounds. So now what we're going to do is take our brake hose and connect it to our vehicle hard line here, which means we're going to put it into this bracket. But because there isn't a lot of play on this line here, it's sat in this bracket and there's a little debris on the end. We want this flared end to be free and clear of any debris so it makes a nice solid connection inside our hose. So we're going to clean the area with brake clean. We're going to make sure that the flared end of our brake line has no debris on it. And we're going to take our new hose. We're going to put the old line into that hose. We're going to push the hose up into the bracket. And we're going to lock that new hose in place with that clip. And we're just going to push the clip into that new hose. And we're actually just going to use a small little hammer and tap the clip into place. I'm going to take our pick tool and just give it an extra little push to make sure it's all the way in. And now our hose is nice and secure while we tighten down our line. So to start, I'm just going to give that a little wiggle, make sure it's in there nice and even. Start to thread this by hand. There's a potential that the angles are mismatched and the threads won't line up. So we're just going to start this by hand, give it a little pull backwards if everything seems to be going in the right direction. We can continue to tighten it down with our 10 millimeter wrench. Again, we'll just give it a check. Two things you don't want to do here are strip this nut and or cross thread. Once you've got that tightened down as far as it'll go, we're going to take brake cleaner once again, just clean the general area. That'll allow us to keep an eye on any potential leaks. Now we can take our bolt, put it through our bracket on our hose, line it up with the bracket on the knuckle, line it up with the bracket on the strut, And when you're tightening this down, just make sure the hose is inside this cutout here and not pinched up against it. We'll go ahead and tighten this down. Now you have to bleed your brakes. So we're going to come here to our brake bleeder. It's going to be a 10 millimeter. We're going to pump our brakes three, four, five times. If you're by yourself, go ahead and give it three or four solid pumps. Hold it all the way to the floor. It's going to be probably pretty easy to go to the floor with not much resistance. 
What you're trying to do is push the air out of the system. You want to come back here to your brake caliper and crack open your bleeder screw. What you're looking for is a clean flow of fluid coming out of your brake bleeder. No pops, no foam, no hesitations, no breaks in the line, just a clean stream of fluid. It may not be a strong stream, it might just come out and drip right down, but as long as there's no air in that line, you're good to close this back up. Now that you're done with your brake bleeding process, what you want to want to do is hit the area with some brake clean. And get off any residual brake fluid. That way you know if you have any leaks. So the area now will be dry. At this time, if you had a cover to go over your brake bleeder, you would put that on now. We don't have covers, but you want to protect that as much as possible. Once you've done bleeding your brakes, you want to go on the inside of your motor, check your brake fluid level. If you are low, now's the time you want to add some back to where you need to be. Once you're done with that, you're all set. All right, so now we can install our wheel. Sometimes when I'm having an issue centering or getting the wheel on nice and flat, I like to do a top nice and tight. Push in, do a bottom nice and tight, and then rock back and forth till I get those two nice and tight. And that usually helps me get a wheel nice and flat. All right, now we can do the other ones. Come in here with our 19 millimeter. Just snug these up. All right, now to torque these down, we're gonna have to put the vehicle on the ground so the wheel doesn't spin. Now that our vehicle's on the ground, we're gonna torque our lug nuts down to 80 foot pounds. We're gonna do it in a crisscross pattern. And then sometimes, if you really feel the need to, you can run around a second time just to make sure. And that's it. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.